We're talking today about soundproofing. Our company is doing a recording studio and I wanted to take this opportunity to talk to you about some really pro level soundproofing. I'm here with Bill Blaylock. Bill, you're the owner of Concept Electronics here in Austin. We've done a lot of work together. And I thought that this project that you're doing for us, Bill, would be a good opportunity to talk about the pro level audio we're doing for this recording studio, but also how this might translate to a media room or other heavy duty soundproofing that might be needed from someone who's watching this video and is planning a build or a remodel. So Bill, tell us about the room we're in here. Well, we're in the control room of a recording studio. Uh, behind us is a vocal room and behind that is a live room where the musicians will actually play. Uh, this is where the engineers will stay. They'll listen to, they'll mix everything together the way it's supposed to come out at the end of the process. So it's really important that they hear exactly what's happening in the other rooms very clearly without interference. And so this room is really the most soundproofed in this office, correct? This is the one that has the heavy duty soundproofing. They're all treated very similarly. Uh, they're all equally important on getting very pure audio either into the system or out of the system. Yeah, that makes sense. So tell us the process. Tell us what we've got here. First of all, you can see we've got our insulation up. Uh, what's the process here? Well, we've got two layers. We've got two walls. We've got an exterior wall that's sealed with a good foam insulation. We've made sure it's a good airtight envelope. Mm -hmm. And then we framed a, a floating inside wall that's insulated with a batting insulation and that adds a different type of sound absorption than the foam does, so we get a wider spectrum of effect. No, oh, that's great. And then on top of those standard two by studs, we've got this metal hat channel. Tell me about this process and what this is doing for us. Well, the hat channel is a common product. What is unique is the use of the clips that span the studs that give the hat channel and the wall, the drywall, uh, the ability to flex in and out a little bit, and that lets it absorb and dissipate energy. Gotcha, and so these are commonly referred to as isolation clips, is that right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay, and then you'll also notice, I thought, I thought this was important to point out, that those clips are screwed into the 2x4, but the hat channel is actually snapping into that clip, so there's not a mechanical bond between the two, is that right? That's correct. Yeah, so now when our sheetrock gets installed, it's not tied mechanically necessarily uh, to that structure behind. Right. So then what's going on top of the hat channel here, Bill? Well, two layers of 5 8 drywall. The first layer goes up. And then when the second layer is put up, it's green glue is applied between the two surfaces, which is a, da a damping compound, which again uh, encourages a little flex, a little bit of energy absorption and dissipation. Gotcha. And you notice in this room that we've got our ceiling on first. So tell us the process of when you've got a room like this. What, what's the kind of order of, of uh, install? Well, we get the walls built, we get it insulated, we get everything sealed up from the corners. And we put the two layers of drywall up with the green glue in between the two layers on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And then when we're ready to, to do the walls, we put the wall board up a single layer and then we come in with acoustic caulk and we caulk all of our joints. And that keeps the caulk behind the finish layer so it doesn't you know, squeeze out into where the, the painter is going to be working also. Yeah, and then you're doing a heavy bead then, correct? We're doing a heavy bead in there, we're, we're smearing it in there, we're making sure it's absolutely airtight, 100% sealed, no bubbles. Nice, and that's also happening where the sheetrock hits the, uh, the subfloor too. That's correct. When we frame the in interior wall, we set the base plate in a bed of that same sealant, uh, then we put the, the drywall on it, and just to make absolutely double sure, we come in and we caulk it again. Oh, that's great, love it. Uh, once that green glue is installed and we've got our double layers of 5 8 on there, how do we treat other penetrations? You know, we're always going to have an outlet or a wall switch that we need to deal with. What's, what's the uh, process for those? Well, we need to make sure every box is putty in and it's actually a clay pad that adheres to the back of a junction box and covers it, uh, covers all the holes and actually um, adds some sound insulation to that metal box itself. Bill, you know that air transfer is so important. Here's a little illustration. Almost 20 years ago, I built a condo project that had concrete walls between two condo basements. And we had a one inch drilled hole in that concrete wall. And with that one inch hole, you could stand in one side and talk to somebody on the other side as if they were standing next door to you. Even though we had this massive concrete wall in mm -hmm. between, it was because of that air transfer, which means sound transfer. Bill, great job on this uh, recording studio. I'm really looking forward to this getting finished up. Can you give us any final tips uh, for somebody who's watching this video? Well, the devil is in the details. Getting every detail just right 100% is what makes it all work. The one shortcoming will negate at least half of the effect.
Hey, Bill, great job on this soundproofing for this recording studio. Very, very impressive on these details. Hey, for more on this topic, I've got several videos I've made over the years on soundproofing. Look for my playlist. Otherwise, visit my blog at mattreisinger.com or follow me on Twitter or Instagram. We'll see you next time.